Okay, welcome to week number six. We are nearing the end of the journey, only a couple weeks left of Millionaire School. And this is one of the most important weeks because what I'm gonna go through is I'm gonna go through a lot of the mechanics of getting a new member started, but I'm also gonna go through kind of the psychology of getting a new member started. But before I go into all of that, what I really wanna cover with you is the numbers and what I believe is that it is a big numbers game. You've got to know that you have to go through enough numbers in order to make it work. Now all of the stuff that I've given you throughout Millionaire School and the end of Millionaire School are things that are going to improve your numbers, but one of the things that's true, no matter how good you are, no matter how much you follow this, you have to follow the numbers. And so you gotta obviously know the numbers and knowing the numbers is one of the reasons why I feel totally confident. It's why I know that I know that I know that you could drop me in any city in the world where my network marketing company can do business, take away all my contacts, take away everything and give me nothing but this knowledge. And I know that within a year I'm earning a six figure income. And part of the reason why I know that is I can take all the skills that I've got. And if I go through the numbers, if I do enough numbers, uh, like I'm about to give you, then it's just going to work out. And so Keep in your mind that it is a numbers game. No matter how good you get, bottom line is you got to go take the action. And so how are the numbers? One of the biggest mistakes that people make is they enroll a handful of people in their business, maybe four, five, six people, something like that, and they expect those four, five, six people to take them all the way to the top of the compensation plan. And unfortunately, that's just not possible based on my experience and based on 20 years of knowing you know, a lot of top income earners in network marketing. I've never met anyone who's enrolled a small number of people and has become a millionaire through doing that. You've got to go through a lot of numbers. And so um, my numbers have gotten a lot better over the years because my skill has improved. Uh, whereas I used to, here's what kind of happened my journey in network marketing. It took me a long time just to figure out how to enroll people because I was a lousy communicator, I was afraid of people, I wouldn't make the calls, and so on and so forth. And so I was a really lousy recruiter. My first two years in network marketing, I sponsored three people, two of which I paid for to get in, one of which I never even told her she was in. I enrolled my mom and I never even told her I enrolled her. So that's how bad of a recruiter I was. The one person that I did enroll was a waiter friend of mine. He had been drinking before the presentation. He signed up. I never heard from him again. So at the end of two years, I had one person in my group and it was me. Now, what ended up happening is I really worked on my communication skills. I worked on you know, being more charismatic. I worked on you know, having some energy and being able to close and all that and I got to the point where I could actually enroll people and I, I actually got really good at enrolling people but I wasn't good at getting new people started I wasn't good at the duplication process and so um, in the breakthrough for me really happened when it was the combination of being able to be a great closer to be a great recruiter but also be able to facilitate the duplication in my team. And here's what I, I, over the last, I mean, over the last, you know, 15 plus years that I've been a six figure earner in network marketing, I, <laughs> it's funny, I expect my numbers to get better. I expect my ratios to get better. Now, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, following the duplication process and getting a new member started, um, here are how the numbers work out for me, and it's how they work out for virtually everyone. Now, my numbers may be a little bit better uh, than this, but by and large, this is what I have typically seen. Out of every 10 people that you enroll, you're not going to get 10 people who go out and duplicate. You're going to get a handful, maybe three, four, or five who disappear. So if we're doing an average, out of every 10 you enroll, you get about four who disappear. They go away. It's like you enroll them, they're excited, and then you never hear from them again. They don't take your calls. And you know, you can spend years and years and years trying to figure out why they don't do anything, but it's just 
People are people. It's the nature. Someone may have stolen their dream. You know, someone may have told them, oh my gosh, I can't believe you got in one of those deals and someone stole their dream. Maybe it was their wife or their husband or boyfriend or girlfriend or aunt or uncle and someone basically said, no, you shouldn't be doing that. Oh my God, someone laughed at them. They got their feelings hurt, whatever. They go away. Don't try and, you know, figure out that too much. You know, Jim Rohn, there's a great CD you should listen to. It's called Building Your Network Marketing Business. And he recorded many, many years ago. And what he talks about is sometimes when you plant seeds, you know, it's a farming analogy. If you plant seeds, sometimes the seeds land on rocky ground. So sometimes <laughs> you plant seeds, they land on rocky ground. Now, sometimes the seed actually grows and it bears fruit. Now, other times you plant the seed and it's like, man, I know it's in fertile ground, but the birds get them. And so you could just say, when people don't call you back, you know, the birds got them. So that's something that I keep in mind when I enroll someone and I never hear from them again. They don't return calls. I just think, you know what? The birds got them. That's it. So that is what I would call the chickens. <laughs> and uh, there's two types of people. There's chickens and there's eagles. And what our job is as professional networkers is to sort through the chickens to find the eagles. Now, there's two sorting processes. The first sorting process is in the recruiting phase. So you sort through the people who are chickens. They're not willing to join the business. They, you know, are not willing to get out of their comfort zone even enough to enroll. And so you have to sort through those in order to find the eagles to enroll, uh, the people to enroll. And then also, there's a sorting process of the people you enroll. It's the same. So you're going to have to sort through the chickens to find the eagles. Now, uh, let's say there's four. I said they disappear. Now, there's going to be about another four who, what I would call, they show up. Now, it might be three. It might be five. You know, the numbers will vary a little bit. But those are the people who, you know, they'll stay in contact. They might come to a training. They might enroll someone. They might not enroll someone. You know, they're not really overly serious about it, or at least they don't stay overly serious about it for very long. And so four who disappear, four who show up. Now those are either chickens or they might be eagles in training. It might be people who, you know, I've had examples where people have kind of hung around for two, three, four years and then they, you know, something changes. They grow as a person and then they start producing. So you're going to have some people like that. Now, I always look at this. It's a long-term game. And so if I've got people who I've enrolled and maybe they're not producing at a really high level, maybe they're just showing up, you know, what I've seen a lot of people over, over the years do is they browbeat the person. It's like, why do you keep paying your monthly fees? Why do you keep getting the product? Why do you keep coming to trainings? You're not doing anything. Why do you show up to meetings? You never have a guest. And you can yell at your people like that. You can be hard on them like that. But chances are that's just going to make them go away. See, I love, I love, love, love loyal product users. And so I never push people that don't want to be pushed. And there's an old saying, <laughs> and um, it, it's uh, from a famous football coach. And they asked him, they said, well, you know, you seem to be able to always get the best out of your players. How do you do it? And uh, it's actually Vince Lombardi. And he said, well, you got to learn how to, you got to know who to pat on the back and who to kick in the butt. And they said, well, how do you know who to pat and who to kick? He said, well, you kick the ones who needed to be patted and you pat the ones who needed to be kicked enough to know the difference. And so there are people that you're going to need to push, but those are your more aggressive personalities. Those are the people who, you know, give you permission to push them. I've had a lot of people who have said, hey, I want you to be hard on me. And if they say be hard on them, be hard on them. You know, push them. That's what they need. But again, if they are a loyal product user, they're showing up, I'm going to let them. You know, I had a guy come to me after uh, training one time, and um, he said, you know, man, I made a big mistake. I got so excited after one of the events, and I was just wanting to go all in. I had enrolled 18 people, and no one was doing anything. I went to all 18 that weren't doing anything, and I said, listen, you either need to get to work or quit. And he said, all but two quit. <laughs> and the two who didn't quit, they didn't do anything. And so those are a lot of people that he could have just kept on. They could have nurtured. Might be eagles in training. So again, four who disappear, four who show up, and then that leaves two. Now that's two who actually are serious. Those are two who build. Those are eagles. Now it might be one, it might be three. 
personally, I've never really had it be more than three. Um, after 20 years doing as much ride as I possibly can, have really worked on my skills, I know I'm never going to get more than about two or three out of every 10. It's just how the numbers have worked out. And if I, I, I've really spent a lot of time analyzing the other leaders in my organization. I've interviewed cross-line leaders. I've interviewed leaders from other network marketing companies, and that is just the reality. And so one of the things that I think our profession tends to do is over-promise and under-deliver. If you are ever presenting and you're showing a prospect, you enroll two, who enroll two, who enroll two, who enroll two, you know, if you all you have to do is go get two, you set up a false expectation because if you enroll two, chances are you get no duplication. You'd be lucky to get one of those two to actually duplicate. And so those are the eagles. Now, here's the key. You've got to decide that you're going to be an eagle not a chicken. That's where it starts. And so that's obviously, I'm speaking to the choir. If you are, if you took the initiative to go through millionaire school and you're at week six and you've been going through all of the exercises and listening to me and taking this in, chances are you are an eagle. Maybe you've been an eagle in training for a while, but now it's time to step up. Now it's time to make a decision that you're going to be an eagle. You're going to go out and you're going to go through the numbers. And here's the mistake that I made because I didn't understand these numbers. I'd enroll a handful of people. I'd have four or five people in my group, maybe six or something like that, that I'd enroll. And it's like, all right, let's go. I'm going to train you. Let's do this. Let's do this. And I'm always trying to motivate my people. I'm always trying to motivate the unmotivated. And it says, Jim Rohn said, it was like, I'm going to make them successful if it killed me. Well, I nearly died. So <laughs> listen, it, it is a, a very frustrating effort to go and try and you know motivate the unmotivated. And so there's a rule in network marketing that says, if you want more milk, go get more cows. And not to relate people to cows, but you know, <laughs> you can't get more milk out of the same amount of cows. You got to go get more cows. And so what happened though with me, what I would do is I would, you know, constantly be calling all of the people who I'd already enrolled instead of calling new people. Now, why did I do that? Number one, it was easier. It's so much easier. It's in your comfort zone to call the people you've already enrolled versus enrolling more. And it's like, well, if I keep calling them, if I stay in contact and I build this amazing relationship, this amazing friendship, uh, then maybe it'll do something. And listen, don't take this as, you know, you're not supposed to build relationships and not supposed to build friendships. You are. But, you know, I thought, man, if I, if I you know, really become friends with them and train them over and over, then, you know, they'll do something. I'll get them motivated. I'll keep promoting trainings. Even though they don't come, I'll keep calling them. And what happens is I kept trying to make these chickens fly. It's like I, you know, find my, my, my new person, John. John, man, there's a training on Tuesday. Uh, you know, so-and-so is going to be speaking. There's a presentation and then training afterward. It's going to be awesome. Can you be there? And he'd be like, yeah, I'll be there. And then Tuesday night comes along and guess what? John's not there. And so I'm calling John going, hey, man, where were you? What happened? Oh, man, I was so tired after work. I couldn't make it. And it's like, oh, well, listen, I learned a lot of great information. Let's get together for lunch. I'll teach you what I know. And so I'd meet him and I'd go through the notes with him. And I'd say, listen, there's a presentation and a training on Saturday. Can you be there? Yeah, man, I'll be there. Saturday comes along. Guess what? He wasn't there. Why wasn't he there? Because chickens don't fly. As much as I wanted that chicken to fly, he just wouldn't fly. And the problem was I had four or five, six people that I was doing this with. And so what happens when you constantly try and chase chickens around and make them fly, what ends up happening is you end up with chicken shit all over you. So here's the lesson. Don't worry about the chickens. Let them keep being chickens. If you want to know the best way to motivate your people, the best way to motivate your team is for you to go out and personally produce. Because when you go out and personally produce, you show your team that it's possible. You give them belief because they see you doing it. And so that's a lot of the magic. If you want to know how to be a great motivator, learn how to be great at personal production. And that alone will motivate people. I remember a guy on my team one time who I was so busy. I enrolled 30 people in one month. And I'll talk about this story more later, but enrolled 30 people in one month. And I had a guy who I remember he came up to me and it was a personal of mine. I had spent very little time with me, with him. I was like, here, you're in, call me every day. <laughs> I'm here for you, I wanna hear from you. Uh, but you know, I'm busy, I'm working with the people who are calling me. 
And um, anyway, so I hadn't spent much time with him. And, you know, he would come to meetings ever so often. And he stopped me. and He said, I just want to let you know how much you motivate me. And I, at the time, I wasn't even speaking. I wasn't even a presenter. I was just inviting people to, you know, following the system. I wasn't a speaker on stage. And I, I, I was kind of shocked. And I said, really? What, why, what makes you say that? And he said, well, just seeing how much you've been able to do personally, man, it really motivates me to go out and take action. And so that's when it really sunk in. If you want to motivate your team, you go produce.